everybody. Welcome to the Dice Tower Live. My name is Tom Vassell. I'm Zeke Garcia. Hi, everybody. Hi, I'm Paula Deming. Oh, hooray! Hooray! Paula is an extremely <laughs> famous movie star. Well, uh, I'm yeah, kidding. Sure, we'll TV go with star. That. TV star <laughs> has. You're like, well, why don't you just tell us, like, what do you do in board gaming right now? Because I know you're on a lot of stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm staying busy. Um, I make board game sketch comedy. Uh, I have a series called Things Get Dicey, uh, which is just jokes for people who play board games. And I also am newly now a regular cast member of the podcast This Game is Broken, which is another comedy-focused bit of content about board games that I think is also newly a proud member of the Dice Tower Network. And... What else do I do in board games? I'm oh I'm sh I stream board games live uh, on Twitch every Wednesday uh, for Gen Con, so you can watch me play board games live through uh, Tabletopia and Tabletop Simulator. There, those are three board game things I'm busy doing. And yet she still made time to show up here. Uh, so before we get started on our topic, we need to have some clarifying stuff. Mm. We're talking about our top ten most played games. Topic picked by Paula. If you don't like it. Uh, yeah, um, just uh, throw all the hate my way. <laughs> so for, for there's a couple of questions I want to ask you also. Time period of your life, I guess. For me, I cut out my childhood because I want to repress the memories. Uh, and But I just didn't want to talk about a bunch of mass market games because they would win. As a kid, I just had so much time. Yeah. That's what I played. I also cut out, I'm sorry, post. it's post-college because all the collectible card gaming that I did in college would also dwarf everything else I've ever done. Hmm. Okay. I just, I'm using it all. I also kind of uh, dug into my childhood a little bit. Um, I pulled out from my childhood games that I played the most that also were really like formative for me as a gamer, I feel like. And so I kept those in. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of I'm running the gamut of my life here. Oh, okay. Well then my second question is, do you include games you play online? Oh, like the app version of a game? Sure, or you know, uh, Tabletopia or Tabletop Simulator yes. or whatever it might be. I did. I, I did not, but it would not have changed my numbers at all. Yeah, I think that's it for me. I doesn't it won't matter. It wouldn't matter, I think. Um because I don't do it a whole lot. There's only one game I could see that might have made a blip onto the list here. It still might be like eleven or twelve or thirteen, you know. Yeah. I also have... these I should mention that the, the list I have here is my best estimate as to <laughs> Yeah. This data, I don't, you know, my numbers are not that solid, so I'm thinking this is the order, and I'm, I'm, you know, again estimating. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to judge some numbers I have versus some gut feelings. So there you go. Yeah, I have two on my list that are specifically. I have a cat now. <laughs> this is my cat Luna. Uh, I have two on my list that I'm currently playing almost exclusively through like Tabletop Simulator or Tabletopia kind of a situation, um, just because I want to still be playing them, and that's how I can play them with friends right now. Um, and I'm the same as Z. I don't track my plays in on like Board Game Geek or anything like that, and so a lot of this is just me kind of knowing how often I pull a game out, just kind of the feeling of that, as opposed to, like, if you ask me, oh my gosh... If you ask me, uh, like, how many times have you actually played this game? I cannot give you a solid exact number, but I don't think that invalidates my list. I'll say it. Uh, we'll, You're not we'll, supposed we'll, we'll. to be making those kinds of calls. Yeah, that's the audience's <laughs> job. Yeah, so and the audience you will know tell me, I'm sure. If your cool. choices and life is, are invalid. Um, <laughs> stick around for that, everybody. Um, then the last question I have is, I'm assuming we all did it the same way, 10 to 1, the most played game, but how did you determine this? Was it by number of plays or by total time played? 
first yeah, this one, is, then the other. Yeah. I no. did a um, number of plays. Yeah, me um, too. Because I was thinking about this, um, I was actually talking with my husband about it, and we were like, well, I mean, I could be like, well, I played an eight-hour game of Twilight Imperium, but I only played it once. I don't feel like that counts in a list like this. Um, if I, you know, a shorter game that I've played, you know, I don't know, a hundred times, but it equaled less than eight hours because it's a short game, I feel like that counts way more than a game I played once that lasted a really long time, for example. So. Alrighty. Well, yeah, with I all those, with, with all those caveats out of the way, I guess it's time to start. Here we go. Right. Number 10. So are we talking about our number 10 here? Is it time to, to do that? Hello, yes. Uh, uh, Roy, what is going on with Roy? Yeah, Paul, I'm pretty sure you're, you're good yeah, to go. Yeah, if I've got some delay, if we need to do a little, I could do a little tech, uh, some, some tech stuff if I need to swap. Uh, I think Tom is just basically right now, even though we are <laughs> trying to work out some technical hiccups, Tom decided to pull focus. <laughs> and uh, wear some sort of particularly goofy mask. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, the professionalism, you, you can you can smell it. That's real good. <laughs> uh, all right, Paula, what do you all got? Right. Let's, all let's right. Walk my top 10, uh, my number 10 on this list is uh, one of my favorite dungeon crawlers, actually. I don't hear people ever talk about it. So it is Warhammer Quest Silver Tower is my top 10, my number 10 of my top 10 list. Um, this is the dungeon crawler I get to the table the most. Uh, I think it's got a campaign, so that helps because a campaign in a game makes it much more likely to get it out more often because you want to move forward in the story. Does it, so, does it, does it hook you when a game has a campaign? Does that oh, hook yeah. you? Yes. I love anything that has a narrative to it. Right. Um, that is absolutely me as a person, me as a gamer, you know, as an actor and performer. Those are the things that draw me to basically anything I do. I love storytelling. Mm -hmm. So a game with a campaign I'm going to do. You are being very distracting to me right now. I gotta Luna. say, I was not I was not expecting a game like this on on the list. I not 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 your list or anyone's list actually. That's just a, <laughs> this is a big surprise. No, no, I just I I haven't met many people who played this game much at all. I never um, hear anyone talk about it ever. Um, but it really is my my favorite of our dungeon crawlers, and we have a fair number of them. And here's why: it's easy to play so you roll dice and then the dice the numbers on the dice allow you to then choose it's dice allocation of the kinds of actions you can do you can spend this value of dice to move you can spend this value of dice to do this specific attack um and i just think that's i like that it's a simple way to choose my actions and it you know it's got really it's warhammer so it's got really nice miniatures that we've got painted and the the game moves quickly. Each scenario moves quickly, and I don't feel like I'm punished for exploring. I feel like some other games kind of punish me for exploring a dungeon. It's like, oh, no, the timer. Uh, now more monsters show up. I'm like, mm. well, I wanted to go get that treasure. And right. this, you just kind of you move through, and you experience the story, and you've got some fun combat, and you've got some like choose-your-own-adventure type aspects to it. It's easy to play. It's visually, I, I like it a lot. So this is my number 10. Well, you're wrong. No, I, I, don't, I, I don't know what to say here. I, I can't say wrong to any of these, right? So that's right, Tom. No, of course not. How would you question that it's one of her most played games? I can't. I mean, you can question that it's a good game. You can certainly question that. No one will I haven't stop it. Actually, I haven't played Still it. So question it, fool. I'm giving you a low hanging fruit. It's also just because a game is one of your most played. And now, doesn't it doesn't mean count it's in this good. year, but it doesn't mean you like it. True. Ooh. Speaking what? of is that, this... my number 10 is anything with Tom Vassell. <laughs> <laughs> Figured we could do that. I'm just, I'm just glad to have made the list. 
yeah. <laughs> now my number my number ten is Liar's Dice or mm. Bluff or Peruto, whichever one you want. You know, um, this happens to be the copy or similar to the copy I have, but it's actually not the copy I've played most on. I played this a lot in college. And uh, it was it, the one I had was one of the liars dice printings. I think from University Games, one of those, you know, garbagey sort of mass market ones. Uh, got it at Toys R Us or something, mm-hmm. and just played it a bunch. You know, anytime we had um, wait, waiting for a rehearsal or something in in the evening after classes were done, but before we started to do something, we would get together and and play liars dice. So that was a big part of it. I also played outside of that setting quite a bit and. Uh, I still like it. So I still own a copy. I still really enjoy the game. It's a very welcoming game. It's one that's easy to play, sort of raucous and fun and over the top and allows for a lot of talking, you know, cajoling, messing around. I like it a lot. So Liar's Dice, my number 10. Liar's Dice. All right. Um, My number 10. And And again, as Z said, these are our best estimates. And so I'm going by, since this game's come out, and how often I've played it, and adding a little bit of it's a longer game than many of the others on my list. So I'm saying La Havre. And I really think this is true because I played it at almost every convention I've gone to for the past several years, or most of them, and I play it at home too. So for me, to make my list is easier than most people's list because I play so many games, different games, and I don't get back to games as much as many people do, which is fine by me. I'm, I'm okay with that. Mm. Um, but La Havre, I just keep going back to it. This game is also called The Harbor in English. <laughs> oh, I see how it is, Tom. You're coming after me. I get it. I'm a oh, big dummy. You told That's me. You saying. You I'm told me before we started to be, to be nice to the guests. And so. <laughs> Thank you. Look, no, I'm sorry. I'm, as far as I know. The Havre translates directly to the harbor, just like Paris translates directly to Paris. <laughs> you were you were really running from that Same one there. Thing. You're thinking uh, of Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Um, I know it's actually called that. People don't start the emails again. Tom, don't don't get this going again. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. All right, all right. That's Paula, I even 10. know what's going on. Do you know what's going on, Paula? I'm just sitting here. I'm just going with it. That's Apparently, the best like you can do. I said that they should have called it when they made it into English from the original, you know, German or whatever. I was like, just call it the harbor. But apparently, it's because that place is called Le Havre. It doesn't it's just translate. Just it's just the city's name, right? The so good you news, know. it wasn't just a few people who mentioned this. No, not at all. Of course, I'm sure it wasn't just a few people. <laughs> Stand correct. <laughs> All right, it's my number 10. Number nine. All right, number nine. My number nine is Castles of Mad King Ludwig. So there's a few reasons for this being number nine on my list. One is we got it really early in our, our gaming collection so i've had it for a lot longer than a lot of other games and it was an early favorite of mine so there was a time in my life where i said this was i was saying this was my favorite game and so it's still up there for me and so i've played it a lot one because i've had longer to play it because i've owned it for years and two because i really like it um and so i actually recently got to Play. It had been a little while since I'd pulled it out, and recently I've played it like three or four times in the last two months, which I feel like is pretty good. <laughs> That's pretty good, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder how many people's numbers are skewed by the past month. Like, well, until a month ago, I, I don't know, but I mean, I assume that it's the gameplays have gone up at certain games. Yeah, I have a couple that I have one specifically that got all of its plays very recently, but I'll wait. No spoilers. Oh, really? I'll wait. That's interesting. Um, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, none of these are late changes. None of these, I would say, are you know something that changed because of what's going on in the world. Uh, for me. All right, so my number boring. nine. I know, right? So predictable. My number nine is a silly game I played with a lot of different groups. 
or silly-ish, I should say. This is King of Tokyo, my number mm. nine. Uh, it's, oh, I didn't think of that been, one. It's been out for a while. I've played with groups when I was teaching high school. I've played with uh, you know live streams we've done and sort of the marathons that's been played. I played a lot of uh, of it at game days, you know. So it's one that was always always just had a very easy time making it to the table. And as they came up with new monsters and little expansions, those things were enough of a of an excuse to get it back onto the table. And I was always very happy to jump in. It's a short game anyway. It's one that's doesn't uh, need a lot of recall. You know, if you haven't played in a few months, that's not much of a problem with King of Tokyo. You can jump right back in pretty much. So, yeah, yeah, I really like it, and I've played quite a bit. Also still own a copy of this. Actually, do I even need to say that? I own all of these but one. Yes, but I want to know if either one of you are mm-hmm. sick of these games and that they're only on the list by virtue of mm. of uh, longevity. I have I, one that I, I don't play very often anymore. Because yeah. I think that's... That's what happened with me with King of Tokyo. I played it a lot, and I still like it, but I think, man, I feel like I played it a lot, and so I'm looking for something else. That happens with a lot of games for me. I play them, and then I'm like, eh, let's find something different. I feel that way about one of them for sure. This is not it. I still completely enjoy King of Tokyo. Uh, have fun with it. So that's my something number nine. that's interesting so far to me, Z, about your list that I thought mm-hmm. about a lot when I was making mine that I've got kind of in some honorable mentions are these games that are really easy to pull out one because you have a large group and they work really well with a large group or you have new gamers. And so right. it's easy to be like, Hey, let's play King of Tokyo. It's, it's kind of like Yahtzee. It's super fun. It looks cool. You know, and how some of the, some games that maybe, maybe make it onto the list because they lend themselves to those situations. So you find themselves yourself playing them a lot as opposed to like, Maybe when you're like, I love this game, but it's hard to get people to play this with me. So right. <laughs> it's not oh, on the way. I, I agree. There's very little correlation at the end of the day, I think, between games that are favorites and games that you'll end up playing a lot. Yeah. Unless you are someone who just sort of sets the pace for everyone around you. You, you know, you just show up, plop the game down and you're like, we're playing this or else. Yeah. yeah, those two things don't necessarily go hand in hand. I agree. All right. Well, I mentioned that I cut out a lot of the collectible card games from my college years, but one of them snuck into my recent life. And it's actually a collectible dice game, and that would be Dice Masters. I I played this one a lot, if only because I keep playing all the new expansions that come out for it. And so I played this one pretty consistently. It's, It's been out for quite a bit now. And I feel like this game has a lot of logic about it, but creativity. Um, That's a lot of what? <laughs> you, the word means it lasts a long time. <laughs> Longevity? Longevity to polynomial activity. Got it. Longevity to polynomial activity. Got it. Okay. Anyhow, uh, Dice Masters <laughs> is one I like a lot. Spell it. Um, <laughs> Is it a spelling bee? I'm sorry. I always lost at spelling bees. You're bringing up awful memories for me now. Oh. Sure, remember he's trying to repress his childhood by not including any of those games on this list. I gotta be careful. My dad might watch this and be like, "What?" (laughs) Oh, you right after this is done, Thomas. We need to talk. That's like like my my... mom listening to some of my podcasts. (laughs) Sorry, mom. She does. She listens to the one where I say. More bad words. <laughs> ah, well then at yeah. least you, at least at least she listens. My dad she doesn't. She does. Just, all right. So I, I haven't even talked about dice masters much, but yeah, it's a fun collectible <laughs> dice game that you can play a lot. And there's so many combinations, I'll never play them all. And I like Marvel and DC the best, and not WWE and Warhammer, even though you can play them and it's essentially the same game. I'm done. <laughs> Eight. OK, 
Okay, my number eight on this list, I wonder how you all will feel about this. So number eight on my list is Pandemic, and I am Ooh. including Legacy in that. You're um, including Legacy? So that's, all that's Pandemics, cool. I'm lumping in together. Okay. Um, because I, Pandemic is another one of those games that's very easy to get to the table, especially with like my family or new players. It's co-op, which helps. It's fun and exciting and tense. And then there's also a legacy, two legacy versions of it. And which are different games, yeah. Yeah, you know, but to me, are, are they, though? <laughs> they're kind yes. of the same. No, they are not. They and are different co- games. They are different games. <laughs> to me, it's kind of all the same. And <laughs> I've played, because I've played Legacy... I've played the game a lot because you play through the whole story. Again, it's that campaign thing. I thought you all might not like that I lumped in Legacy with this. Hey, but... you're the guest. You get to do whatever you want, Paula. I think it's a great <laughs> I'm the bad I think it's a good wonderful cop. choice. And uh, I, for one, applaud lumping in things together that don't belong together <laughs> or on this list. Like many of Tom's choices. I, I feel like I feel like Z. This is a setup for something you're going to do later. No, actually, I uh, I was good. Surely, uh, pandemic most is I somewhere did, on your list, Z. I possibly, feel like it's got to be possibly. But um, I the most I did was combine like a version one and a, and a version two of something, which I did a couple of times. You'll see. Well, then you're wrong also. All right. <laughs> it's the same game. Come on. Now you're going to tell me next I have to play on the same copy or it doesn't count? Yes. Come on. You played. You put Dice Masters on yours. That's like technically different versions of the same game every time. Mm-hmm. Technically, shut up. All right. well, technically, <laughs> that word you said is not a word. <laughs> okay. My number eight is Time's Up. So this includes there. both Time's Up and Time's Up Title Recall. No. Can't Wait. Do <laughs> Wait a minute. I'm joking. It's just regular <laughs> Time's Up. It is now because I realized I put that right after I said what I said. So <laughs> I've been I've been vassaled. That's Anyhow. Right. You got got. This is actually the only party game on my list. I play a lot of party games, but... I mix them up, you know, so I'm always playing different ones. But Time's Up is the one party game, other than Balderdash, that consistently hits the table. Uh, I really like the, this one works with teams. It gets played at conventions. It gets played in every marathon we've ever done. Uh, I I don't know. I just, I I found it to be extremely enjoyable. So uh, not much more I could say about it. Uh, I have played this with Z. I don't believe I've played it with well, Paula, were you in our Time's Up game? No. No, I wasn't. I think I played Time's Up with more people, different people, though, than any other game on my list. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Did I skip Z? Oh, wait. I got skipped? <laughs> you didn't even know <laughs> this! Re- did none of us realize Z? You know why? Realize? You know why? Because it was Pandemic. And I just assumed, just assumed that was, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> That's messed up, cat. That ain't right. All right, well, Even you thought it was your pick. I, I, I'm, I'm just sort of lost. I'm having a really hard time following this because of the new look we're going with. Uh, I was going to wait to tell Roy that, but woof, boy. Anyway, my number eight pick, then. I'll do it now. Uh, my I, number I, eight I, pick. I agree with Z real quick. I, I think it's easier if we could just see each other. Uh, all right, my number eight pick, I'm going to go ahead and go with it, is Imperial Settlers. In Imperial Settlers, I played, I remember we had, the first time I played was actually at one of the Dice Tower conventions. We had like an early copy, I want to say, and I played it there for the first time. I then ended up with that copy, and I just continued playing it through that weekend and continued playing it after that, and this one... Because of all the expansions to it, every time there is a new one, it comes back to the table, even if I I cooled on it a bit. And it'll sort of revitalize, you know, kind of like the 
what Dice Masters does does for you, Tom. I, I sort of get back into it. You know, I do a little deck building. Or like how a legacy game might make you want to like play that same game again, but now there's a slightly different story to it, so you like play more of it. No, no, not like that. I don't really like that. No, it's kind of a different thing. <laughs> Um, anyway, I play. I've played Imperial Settlers a lot, mostly two player. I still think it's best with two, but uh, there's so much content there. You know, it's insane. And there's even an expansion coming up. That you might like Paula. That uh, seems to be kind of story driven. Like you, you take your little mm-hmm. uh, faction, your little kingdom through time, build them up. They earn the ability to go from like the Dark Ages to the Middle Ages or something, and, and get new buildings. It's um, a legacy expansion. Yeah, it's hey, like, it it's sounds like, right up my alley. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah, Imperial Settlers, my number eight. I, I love it still. My number eight is Time's Shut Up. up. <laughs> <laughs> we all know it. Number seven. Okay, number seven. I don't even know how to talk about this. I'm distracted by what's happening. Actually, this is appropriate because Tom's situation right now is somewhat horrifying to me. And um, my number seven is the game that got me into the hobby, and that's Betrayal at House on the Hill, which is also horrifying in a a variety of ways. Um, (laughs) So this is a game that... I wore it on the wrong number. Ah. So Betrayal is just, I mean, it's everything like I was just saying that I love, which is just storytelling and character and, you know, flipping. I've talked about this before, but flipping over cards and being like, what? I look in a mirror and there's something and something I see something behind me and I turn around. And it's not there. And I won the first game. I was the trader. And then I won the first time I played. And I was like, <laughs> we should play more games. Are they all like this? Um, and so it's just especially early on in um, me getting into the hobby in a more modern way, you know, not in my childhood. This is just a game that we played a lot. And it's fun to show to people like, hey, games aren't just roll dice, move around the edge of the board. You know, it can be this like the storytelling experience. And when the trail works well, it works really well. That's a good um, uh, delineation there. I don't there, yeah. play it very much now. This is the game that I almost never play now. Um, because when it doesn't work, it doesn't work. <laughs> and I have less patience for it now at this point in my uh, involvement in the hobby, I guess. Are you excited about the betrayal with Scooby-Doo? <gasps> what? They're doing one with Scooby-Doo? I didn't know that. Is that real? They are. The op, I think, is doing it. Um so it's Betrayal at House on a Hill, but with a Scooby-Doo setting. I mean, it's an IP that makes a lot of sense with this. Ooh, right. Yeah, I would play that. I would give at that At the end a of every one, uh, you pull off a mask. I like that part. <laughs> there you go. You can't. From what, Does it come with a plus dog? Plus, from what I heard, half the scenarios are still broken, so that'll be fun. You're all nostalgic. <laughs> you don't know that. Come on now. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Well, they might be. <laughs> all right, my number is me, Tom. Shut your mouth. <laughs> You were trying to skip me again, fool. I got this. All right, my number seven, I have played a lot. I think I've played with you, Tom. Again, the expansions did it a little bit, but mostly it was a core game uh, play experience. That is Race for the Galaxy. Mm. I was always a fan of San Juan. I played San Juan a decent amount. But once Race for the Galaxy came out, I pretty much switched fully to it and just kept playing it this one got a lot of plays at local game nights local game days whatever just played and played and played and played it got you know uh, so much traffic that came through sort of race for the galaxy uh this was still in the time where these kinds of games there were not a lot of them i think sort of like thinkier more euro-y card only games right like this is before you know dominion this is before all of these games that became about the cards and made just a card game into a meal as opposed to if it's not a board game it's just a little filler 
I think Race for the Galaxy has the time length of a filler, but it's thinky and super engaging. You can keep coming back to it. Unfortunately, I think the expansions are not that great for the most part. They're they're hit and miss, but you don't need them. You know, the game is rock solid. I actually think this is one I've definitely cooled on because I've played it so much. If you made me pick right now which one to keep between between this and San Juan, I would just keep San Juan. I think that I just is. I burnt this out a little bit. So that is blasphemy. Blasphemy. That's my number seven race for the galaxy. My number seven is also in space, and it is a game I played so much that I can teach it without looking at the rule book, and that is Cosmic Encounter. Cosmic Encounter. I. <laughs> That's what I thought you might say. Is it well? Clank? You? Huh? Is, is it, it clank? clank? No, it's Cosmic Encounter. Where are you getting Clank from? Clank in space. <laughs> <laughs> it's Cosmic Encounter. In, in space, space. <laughs> as, as opposed to the one that takes place in Michigan. That's no. There's the Game of There's the Game of Thrones one. It's not Anyhow. Cosmic Encounter. <laughs> All right, so Cosmic Encounter. Just, I mean, what else is there to say? It's just a great game. Uh, this one is second to Times Up, and that I play it with the most different people because almost always I play with a different group of people wherever I go, and it's I get asked to play it a lot, so there's that. But I just like the the mix. Every game is different. So it's an easy one to play, and I don't get tired of it. Yeah. That's it. Mock it. It's old. No, it's a fun game. So are you. It's old. It's older <laughs> it's than me. Old. <laughs> it is older, yeah. It's older than all of us. Um, no, I think that's a good pick, Tom. I think you're right. And plus, again, it being your favorite game for a long time, everywhere you show up, it's coming out. People want to play that with you. Yeah. Actually, I should I should reorder my favorite game list for games I feel like playing at any given moment. True. People are like, what's your favorite game? Uh, Gloomhaven um, Scenario 62. <laughs> I just need to play that one over and over and over again. I just love it so much. And then so they play, much. you're like, you know what? I think 63 is my new favorite. <laughs> that is one way to do it. <laughs> so, all right. That's my number seven, Cosmic Encounter. Number six. Oh, jeez, that's oh, terrifying. Oh, my goodness. Um, that is I don't like that nightmare one. Nightmare juice. <laughs> Masks oh, make me goodness. deeply uncomfortable. I'll say it. Tom Vassell makes me deeply uncomfortable. <laughs> it's a win. Okay, yeah, well. Whammy. At least try to speak like him. I don't even know what I'm wearing, actually. You're wearing a golem. It's golem. It's upsetting. Oh. Call me your precious. Oh, yeah. Tom, you did, you did not call me your precious. Uh, yeah, we talked about that. That's a that's an HR thing. Okay. Right. Well, number six on my list of most played games in my life is a two-player game. I play a lot of two-player Lord of the games. Lord of the Rings. It is not Lord of the Rings, uh, though that would have been good. Lost Cities. Lost Cities. It is. Oh, I do like Lost Cities, but it's not on this list. Spoilers. This is Memoir 44. Ooh. So I wow. Yeah. <laughs> I, this was my number eleven. Really? Yeah. 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 I, I really like it. We have a lot of the different maps for it, um, expansions and stuff for it. I just think it's just really fun. I always need games that play well at two players or two player, just straight up two player games, and. I just, I like rolling the dice. I like the card actions. It's such an accessible way to have kind of like a war game experience, I feel like. And it's fun and it's different every time. And I just, re I really like it and we play it a lot. So, do you have the campaign book? I think so. It's we a tend hard to cover book. No, you know what? No, we don't have that. If you like it, you should get that because it's it's basically, I don't know, like 40 some more scenarios. They're all really good, too. Yeah. And you can even play them like as a campaign going through them. Uh, oh, that's the magic word. Campaign. I'm going to say you've immediately found my weakness. I'm like, what? There's a campaign? Oh, Is there a, a character I can name and carry them through the whole time? My soldier will catch, not die. Though, the catch is I don't know where and how much this would cost. Um, this was that's something the that they that they sold and. 
Let me see here. Memoir. I'm going to look it up. On so it's e out of print is what you're saying. You're suggesting so something that's deeply has it, out of print. Send it to me. Okay. So on eBay, it's running for 190 bucks. That's, <laughs> that's a bit rich for my blood. But. but listen, that's only like $10 a scenario. Think of it as um, downloadable content. Oh. That's right. That's less than if two of us are playing the game, that's five dollars each. That's less than going to the movies. So justified. I'm going to make a purchase as soon as we're done. I have to go actually now because I need to get on eBay. Here's, I also have a prototype deal. of mine that I want to show you, Paula. It's campaign based. <laughs> um, we'll talk after this. I think you'll like I don't, campaign. Here's the thing, though. I don't think we could use the going to the movies thing right now. That's not a... For me, You're right, it's not even an option. Involves kind of waking up a little bit and lifting up your iPad. You're like, <laughs> <laughs> I know it used to be that's the way you would like sort of justify your game purchases. You know, going to movies about to ten movies. bucks. Yeah, right. Well, so I played this many times. I've now paid for it. Now watching a movie on Netflix is like twelve cents for <laughs> two hours. Yeah, and there's no I mean? justifying any new purchases right now. You need now. to buy if you buy a game right now, you have to play it 350 times before you start to break even. <laughs> and you also have to play all the different part to all the different other players yourself because what do you <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Oh, all right, is it me? It yes. is you. All right. So my number, number six, six. <laughs> the worst you're the worst. You're you're ha you're you better be glad I have to socially distance myself from you. <laughs> this whole thing's a setup so that we had to be apart. Oh, okay. All right, my number six is my current favorite game, Fifty First State. Oh. This counts the Fifty First State Master Set, the newest available thing, as well as when it first came out, Fifty First State. This was after Race for the Galaxy. This one was definitely one that, when it came along, I cooled on Race for the Galaxy. I've always been a big fan of um, card games, but also not just sort of like colors and numbers games, which is what I call them. You know, like, this game has six colors. The cards go one through seven. And then you collect them, or you discard them, or you tr take tricks with them. That's what I call card, you know, colors and numbers games. I like the card games that have... Ideally, a cool story, but, but there's more to the cards. They feel crunchier. And after Race for the Galaxy, 51st State, the original printing of that came along, and I was in heaven. It's post-apocalyptic. It's thinky. It's deep. It's got a lot going on. Very tactical. Unfortunately, the game was not very easy to teach. The symbology was a, a beast. Mm, yeah. And eventually, Imperial Settlers came out. Da, 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 da. And they came out with 51st State Master Set, which adapted a lot of new stuff, incorporated a lot of stuff into it. But I've honestly played both, like, you know, the original and the new one, tons. So when I combined them, this was going to find a place on the list, no problem. Uh, I know they are a little different, so somebody might say they don't really fit together, but those people are crazy. <laughs> Try it, Tom. Go ahead. Try it. Say something. See what happens. My number six. Right. <laughs> Just moving on. My number six is Lost Cities, actually. What? Good choice. You, you call it. Um, yes, my, my wife is not really interested in Memoir 44, so Lost Cities is the winner in that regard. Um, we just played it so much. Uh, not as much recently, because... There's so many other two-player games, and I'll be like, oh, let's try this one, let's try yeah. this one. But Lost Cities is one of those games where we sit down, and I've always enjoyed the fact that we sit there, we're like, eh, we're going to play Lost Cities. And as soon as we draw those eight cards, we are now mortal enemies. <laughs> and there is no way on earth I'm going to give you a card you need, except right. I have to. And I'm going to put it down as begrudgingly as any part of our relationship has ever been. Oh, my it's pretty intense, but as soon as the game's over, we hug and we're good. But during the game, and I love it. The fact that you need to hug after the game is no, kind of I don't, no, it's not like that. It's not after like the that. game, like we're still okay, I, right? I, we're still, you know, we're still I, like I each mop other. the sweat from my brow and I give her a hug. 
and then I storm out. I'm like, well, what are you talking no, about? No, no, no. I, I don't think I have got pretty mad during some Lost City games, but not because you got whooped. You bad at it. Well, yes, and, and no, I'm not. But <laughs> I've been watching <laughs> from the window. That's the worst part of the whole story. Play that eight, you fool. All right. So my, anyway, my number six, Lost Cities. Tom, question for you. Do you like the uh, when Lost Cities added that new color, the sixth color or whatever? What are your thoughts it's, on that? It's good, but it makes Lost Cities a little too easy. It's a little too easy to um, you, you each put, player can go for three colors now, which right. makes it so you don't interact as much, I thought. It's good still, but I'd rather with five. Okay. Number five. Okay, Ow. number five. The, is this a? I can't tell if this is a werewolf or a vampire. I'll be honest. It's a vamp wolf. Vamp. I agree. Wolf. I agree. Were- kind of like a were- a werepire. Yeah. It's a werepire. It, We've coined it. I side, so I went with both. Come on now. Give me some <laughs> it's really cute. It's kind of a cute mask. <laughs> it is. It's much better than the Gollum mask, I'll like say. A, like a, I, I think it's know, a like Scooby-Doo a... mask, actually. Ah. Yeah. Um, y'all, my cat is driving me nuts. I'm so sorry. She cannot. She will not leave me alone. Okay. So, number five. So, this is another two-player game um, that I discovered... Go away for a second. I love her, but come on. That I, I discovered to, somewhat recently and I need just to do immediately. I'm distracting too. I'm dealing with masks and cats. Jeez. <laughs> I'm gonna go I'm away, gonna cat. So this is <laughs> this is one of the games that I said um, is one that I am playing so much right now online. Um, and I'm playing it a ton. I play it with a friend who doesn't live anywhere near me so the only way we can play it is through like a tabletop simulator situation um and that's targi um it's Ah. become one of my new favorite games it's such a good two-player game and it's just like what tom was saying about lost cities like we get very (laughs) immediately like we start playing and then it's just immediate like stress and trash talking and hate placing our figures and it's so fun and I just want to play it all the time. So I've played it now a ton. Uh, and it is number five on my list. And I love it. And if you haven't played it and you're looking for a good two-player game and you don't mind being a little bit mean, play this game. I'm getting excited just <laughs> thinking about it. I, I want to play it as soon as we're done. <laughs> this is such a good pick, yeah. I, I This pick, if Targi and Lost Cities had come out, Closer together, I think this could have eclipsed it for me. Me and my wife might have played this more. Yeah. Yeah, they're the same, that similar kind of feel of that style of two-player game, I feel like, where it does get intense and competitive, and it's just really fun. That's all you, Z. That is me. All right, my number five is a weird one that I played a lot when I was kind of getting into gaming. I don't even remember how I came across this, but this is the Nightmare Before Christmas trading card game. And the Nightmare wait, Before uh, Christmas. Wait, what? Yeah, that's right. The Nightmare Before Christmas <laughs> trading card game that came out from NECA. And it is designed by Andrew Parks and Mr. Z Man himself, Zev. Schlesinger. You're saying this like it's some big surprise. Well, Paula is... It was a surprise to me. Surprise. Nobody's talking oh. to you right now, Tom. Oh. Um, and yes... <laughs> no. Okay. Anyway, Paula. So this game, um, it's just a collectible card game, but they based it on the movie, obviously. Mm-hmm. And I, at some point, I came across some of the starter decks got those and the game was fascinating i found it to be such a different collectible card game than everything else that i was playing at the time it it felt like a board game in some ways you could do a little deck building but it wasn't that necessary it wasn't that important the whole thing you could just sort of construct whatever you wanted your deck to do but after that you didn't really need to keep getting new cards i think mm. that's partly why the game failed because 
once no you were happy with your deck, it. yeah, you just sort of were happy with it. But I played it a ton. I just played this so much, and it's a great, it's a multiplayer game, technically. Uh, I just played the snot out of it, uh, two player, so much. Um, I love you searching for a word there. I, oh, yeah, well, I was going to go with something else, but I can't do that. Um, so, yeah, I really like it. Nightmare Before Christmas trading card game. And I don't know if you knew this, but Andrew Parks designed it, Paula, and Zef Schlesinger. I didn't know who designed it because I didn't even know it existed. Yeah, it exists. It's cool. It's better than it should be. Ooh, uh, like that? Said, it's... just spoke. <laughs> I don't want it's, this I to agree that it is, anymore. I agree. You look at it and you're thinking, here's some garbage, old, dead, collectible card game. It is old and it is certainly dead, but it's a surprisingly good game. This is not what's one this? I regret. What's this? It's Z's number pick. All right. My number five is the first crossover with Mr. Z Garcia. Oh, man. Uh, Race for the Galaxy? That is correct, which proves I like it better than he does because I don't even consider this whole uh, San Juan nonsense. Race for the Galaxy is the king, baby. And I will never get tired of playing this game. And I do agree with Z about the expansions. They are they're okay. And actually, you can play with the first two and just stick some cards in and just not worry about it. They're fine. But they did get a little wonky, and they don't necessarily... Again, if you don't have them, the game is still fantastic. I, agree. I just... You don't I just taught this to some people at Dice Tower West, I think, and played it there. And just, man, I, I just like this. Every time I play it, it's, it's fun to hmm. just continually pull this out. I, I got the teaching down. We did this with the top 10 games. I don't like playing with new people. I'm pulling Race for the Galaxy off that list because I think I can now teach it mm. well enough to new people that it's okay. I'll still whoop them because there's that natural... Uh, I you know, guess you game. don't have a top 10 humble list, so there's that. <laughs> I was going to make a top 10 humble. <laughs> Whew, Why is everything so mean today? <laughs> Feeling I'm sick of being inside. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so yeah. each top 10 is going to get progressively worse. No, I'm kidding. I'm One of my kids is going to come up and just clock me when I'll be like, what was that? They're like, Z texted me and told me to do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. So that is uh, Race for the Galaxy. This one I have played quite a bit on as an actual game, um, but I've also played it as a card game. I mean, as an app, too, mm. but I'm happy with both. My deck is worn out. That's how much I played Race for the Galaxy. My number five. Number four. Okay. Number five. I mean, number four. Who knows what number we're on? Just like I can't count the number of actual plays I've had. I can't count the, the number of the, the list that we're on. <laughs> oh, Tom is the worst Just thing ever. Look at ah! it. It doesn't... <laughs> it's look at too this. big. Too no, your head. head is too big. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you look insane right now, trying to hide your <laughs> face neck. Uh, number four is one of the games from my childhood. I I don't know how to feel that I have to go in the list right after Tom has put a mask on. Yeah, like, I, I agree, have to, I agree. It's, it's not It's my a responsibility thing. to rein it back in. No. I agree. Tom, what you need to do is when Paul is done speaking, but before I go, just dip down, put it on, and then pop back up. <laughs> Got it. Uh, right. uh, okay, so number four is a game um, from my childhood that I grew up playing with my family um, at every family gathering. I've played this so much with my cousins, um, and it's spades. So uh, card game, it's the only game, well, it's basically the only kind of classic game like this on my list that's just like a card game. Uh, I love spades. I love trick-taking games uh i have so many good memories of playing this with my sister and my cousins every time my family would get together for thanksgiving and so we've played it a lot so that's number four on my list nice i like yeah. that Very yeah, good. a lot of people have these kind of games on yeah. the list a lot of card games there yeah whatever you know, depending on, yeah 
depending on where you grew up, right in the world, a game will be different, but it's that one game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I never right, played, like, Euchre or anything like that, because I'm from right. the South. So. Right, right, exactly. Yeah, it does seem to be kind of a, a thing. There's Bridge, Hearts, Euchre, uh, Rook, uh, these kind of games that pe- a lot of people play. Well, there's also, like, you know, Go and Chess and... Mm-hmm. Dominoes, ah, whatever. That's for, my family that's for plays that. a lot of dominoes as well. I left that kind of off my list, but that's the other thing. When we all get together, we play dominoes. So I've played a lot of dominoes. But I what thought, what kind of I dominoes? Want, uh, just regular dominoes. I think I. It's just I don't think it's one of the variations. I don't actually know. Um, but we just have like seven tiles, and you know, you're just playing them out and matching them up. And if you can't play you have to draw until you can play that gets just brutal um until you go out first and then when you're out you tile up your dots and is this just normal dominoes i've only played with my family dominoes is kind of saying normal dominoes (laughs) is kind of like saying normal deck of cards i guess that's that's fair so Um, the one i played i played a different thing which is you know similar in some ways but there's no replenishing your hand once you're uh, you got to go out, and if you can't play, you just skip your turn, oh. and then someone's trying to go out at the table. You play yeah. partnerships. We draw when you can't play. It's rough. So, I don't know. Maybe it's just Schmidt family dominoes is the <laughs> just our house rules. I have no idea, Schmidt but we dominoes, play it a lot. well known. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the variants on Board Game Geek. That's right. <laughs> All right, my number four is the one that I got rid of. Oh. It definitely burned out. Mm. Um, this was getting played by everyone, everywhere, consistently. I've played this just so much, and I was I always thought it was pretty good, but not as big a fan as the world seems to be. That's Dominion. Mm. So this Dominion. almost made my list. Just from the time it came out, you know, everybody was playing it literally everywhere. You, you, There was no game night, game gathering, game convention that somebody wasn't trying to pull you into a game of Dominion, you know. So I played a lot. I, I enjoyed my time with it. The problem there was v- pretty quickly you could tell that some folks were, were like Dominion players and then some folks were Dominion players. Mm-hmm. Those people could look at the 10 cards that got displayed before the game started, and they weren't really playing. They were just sort of going through the motions because they knew everything they were going to do and by how much they were going to beat you. So any game, I think, that gets that sort of fan base, that sort of fanaticism built around it, starts to push me out. You know, that happens... Yeah, but the good news is is that it, with Dominion, there's been a hill because those people have kind of faded off into something else now. I guess. You think so? Just because it's old enough? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I, I guess. So. I guess so. Um, but anyway, I play it a lot and I just burnt out on it. Uh, this is not one I necessarily want to go back to. I'll play it now. It's been so long. I, I can see myself playing now and not really having a problem with it. But... Man, just so much of it. I eventually was like, all right, enough Dominion. Yeah. My number four. I feel that wanting to like be able to engage in a game kind of casually. And when you find yourself in a scenario where people are taking it like really, really, really seriously or know it so well that you can't compete with them, I, I kind of, I feel that like kind of push me away from it a little bit as well. So, yeah. You know. Just stops being like, let's get together and play a game. And it becomes, let's sit down and compete. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I understand there is competition in any game you're playing unless it's cooperative, but I don't necessarily want to sit down and compete. I want to sit down and have fun with a game. Yeah. Dominion was Dominion was definitely one that fell trapped to that, uh, fell into that. And then, uh, Puerto Rico is another one that I think has fallen into that category. Mm. People do this whole, you know, they, they like they they know it inside and out. They only choose to play with people at their level or else. Yeah, I can't deal with that. All right, my number four is uh, Puerto Rico. Just <laughs> <laughs> Puerto Rico is probably in the top twenty or thirty, but 
Uh, my number four is a game that I have many, many, many variations on. Seven and a half maps, actually. Um, and that is Ticket to Ride. Oh. <laughs> However, to be clear, I'm talking about Ticket to Ride USA because I'm not combining stuff like others. Um, so <laughs> Ticket to oh, oh, okay. We got called out. We got called out. I need a mask. Although I, although I don't know that there's a lot of difference between a, an expansion map for Ticket to Ride and an expansion for another game. So. <laughs> Ooh, I'm trying to figure out what game this is. What did I just punch? <laughs> Z. Square face. <laughs> <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's a <laughs> I like that. I like that. Yeah. This is my face. All right. Go ahead. Anyway, Ticket to Ride. Not a whole lot I can say about it. This is another one I've also played a lot online and on the app, but I've also played it in life. And this is one of the only games in my life that I've played as an app with somebody face to face. Like I played it on an air. I think I played it with Z on an airplane. I played with people on airplanes. I played with my wife when we're flying. You know, the just. It's a good one all around, but just the amount of times I've taught it to new people, and I end up playing it myself. Um, so Ticket to Ride, it was an easy pick for me, my number four. Nice. Number three. Okay, well, now, see, now I feel bad. I've made Tom feel like he can't put a mask on. What? <laughs> I can do what I want. <laughs> so my number three might sound like a bit of a conflict with the statement I just made about Z's number four, um, because it's Magic the Gathering. Uh, so it's another card game that I have played, especially recently, a lot. I've gotten really into the Throne of Eldraine set that came out, and I love the art. I just want to look at all the cards. I have all these, like, knights. They're all really cool looking, like, ladies, you know, as knights in this, and I just love it. And it's easy to to play I play kitchen table I don't because I don't want to get too serious with everyone I'm not going to go to a game store on Friday night and compete with strangers that is not who I am but it's so easy to sit down with other friends who are into it and play it and you can play a game and like depending on the game sometimes it can be over really fast so then you just play again and you play again and you play again and next thing you know you've played 10 games of it in one night and I've just been playing it a lot. It's the thing I've played the most recently, probably just recently. Um, and I really like it. So that is my number three, Magic the Gathering. Cool, yeah, cool. Magic the Gathering almost made my list as well because mm -hmm. yeah, I played a decent amount a long time ago. I mm -hmm. haven't played recently, but um, same thing as you, Paula. I would definitely, I, I used to very much avoid the competitive scene. Just played casually. Uh, the only time I did come kind of close to playing with someone that did a lot of competitive gaming was in college. I had a, I happened to have a Magic deck for some reason, uh, <laughs> and he did because he always had it apparently. Just with and him we, all the time. Just always, yeah, I've yeah, always yeah. got it on me. He was like, he sort of like, he sort of was like, oh, let's play, you know, just casual this and that. And immediately upon shuffle, shuffling the decks and starting, it became not casual. Yeah. That was the, that was the final nail in the I coffin for me. I was with like, people like that, for sure. They're like, oh, yeah, it's just casual. And then they're like Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. As soon as they touch the magic cards, like. <laughs> you're like, um, never mind. This isn't fun anymore. <laughs> Correct. I was, that was it. That's the closest I have ever come and will ever come to playing competitive magic. Nope. No way. But, yeah, I played a lot. All right, my number three is uh, is a good one uh, when I'm talking about avoiding people because oh here goes Tom putting something on while uh, his camera's off. Okay. <laughs> oh my goodness. That was worth it, I think. Tom. <laughs> terrifying man. I like it. I want to borrow that. That's an awesome mask. I'm wearing that for Halloween. Awesome. That's a really yeah. good one. <laughs> uh, all right, my number three, I was just talking about avoiding people, so my number three is perfect because it's mostly solitaire. Uh, my number three is Onirim, uh, or Onirim. I think it's supposed to be Onirim. Uh, this one I've played quite a bit. I've played also two editions worth of this a lot. Your original one came on a little card 
deck, uh, you know, with the, the, the deck split in half and put in a little square box. Mm-hmm. So I played that a bunch. Eventually, second edition came out with more content, got that immediately as soon as I could. And I have played that a ton. I've played this on the app a decent amount. Played two player a decent amount, but mostly it's been solitaire. Um, and while I haven't played too much of it lately, this was the kind of game that for a while there you could kind of reliably count on me playing in the evening. When I had a little bit of time, you know, I just would pull out the deck, shuffle it, and play a hand or two. It's just a very relaxing... It's not that it's that there isn't tension in the game. I think it can be very tense, but it's almost comfort food for me. You know, it's the kind of game you know so well, you can just sort of set up and play. It takes 20 minutes or whatever, and then you're done. It's a nice weighted blanket, and then I'm done with that activity. I can go do something else. I really like it. I used it for that sort of feel a lot. So my number three, Onirim. My number three is another crossover, and once again, it's with Z. But unlike Z, Garcia, I did not get rid of this game because it's amazing, and that is Dominion. I still love it. And, yes, I've run into those Dominion people, but I don't care because, A, I'm as good as they are. In my humble <laughs> manner. <laughs> well. Uh. No, no, but I mean, I can hold my own at least. How's that? And B, I just don't play with those people more than once. You play one game and Dominion's pretty fast. You're like, okay, that was fun. Who yeah, else bye. is there? Yeah. Dominion's also a game. Like, I just I just played it for the first time with somebody who had never played before because I needed to try out the new expansion. And it was also very easy. to. T- it's easy to teach people. It's, yeah. It, that whole A, B, C, D thing, you know, action, buy, clear, draw. Really simple. I don't know. I just The mechanics of it soothe me. It's a game I can play. I, I can play very – it's also a game when I play with new people. Like, you know, I talk about Race for the Galaxy, how I'll whoop people who've never played before. But with uh, Dominion, it's really easy to play – not optimally and be like, I never bought that card. That card doesn't look like it's great, but you know what? I'm going to buy some of it and see what happens. You can easily do that. And because of that, I think the game's a lot of fun. Yeah. Mm. This is another one I feel like that is like easy to pull out when it's like, oh, you've never played a deck builder before? Or, oh, you've never done that? Let's just play this. It's easy. It's not, yeah, that gets a lot of plays. So yeah. My number three, Dominion. Number two. Okay, number two. This is uh, the the other game on my list from my childhood. It could not be left off this list. It just wouldn't be fair to who I am. I feel like as a gamer, it's Schmidt been Domino's. so influential. It's it's some version of Domino's that I can't actually describe to you. Um, you know, it's Clue, the game Clue. Uh, I this was my favorite game as a kid. I played it. so so much, just all the time. And it was one game that as I got out of being a kid and into middle school and high school, I was still playing Clue. It was like the game that stuck around. I wasn't really playing Life anymore or Sorry or any of those games. I was still playing Clue. I love it. And I'm still always on the look for games that make me feel how Clue made me feel as a kid, Um, except without like the roll and move kind of situation. Um, I just, I love it. It informs so much. I mean, there's a story. Okay, I made up a story for it. It's not like, it doesn't have a campaign. It doesn't really have a story, but sort of. And as a kid, I, I definitely projected my own story onto it. And I just, I've played it so much and it's number two on my list. That's my favorite of those kinds of games, too, the mass market stuff. Mm -hmm. And I I, I agree with you uh, on a lot of that. That's interesting that we both like that game so much and we both have a similar schooling. That's weird. That's not a parallel. That's not a thing I ever thought about. Yeah. Also, it's the first time I really thought about strategy in a game. Like, Mm. I used to play it a lot with my older sister who would always win. And the day I found out what she was doing to win, which was basically you have your hand of cards. She's like, okay, well, you don't show, you don't ask the person next to you for three cards you don't know anything about. 
you want to name two cards that are in your hand and then have a third one that isn't. And that way, if no one can show you a card, you know which card they don't have. And you're like, what? Deduction? And I had never, it blew my mind. And yeah, I just, it's, it really is so much of how I formed as a gamer. I, yeah. Nice. I like it. I like it. In fact, I'm changing my number two answer <laughs> to be the game of life. No, um, <laughs> my number two is the card game for two players, sort of your Lost Cities and your Targi. This was mine that I just played nonstop, and that's Blue Moon, oh. which I'm combining wow. here with Blue Moon and Blue Moon Legends, which was a yeah, reprint. Same game like an all-in-one box. Uh, I actually own both because I could not bring myself to get rid of the beautiful tarot-sized blue moon cards after I got the new one. Uh, the new one's all-in-one. So every everything that came out for it, including some promo cards, was it or is in Blue Moon Legends. But I wasn't about to give up my old set. I had way too many good memories with it. I have played this in, you know, just so many different settings like coffee houses and, you know, hanging out by a pool with someone while there was a party going on, like a, you know, a low key party. Um, <laughs> As opposed to those wild parties. <laughs> not like, like there wasn't music. To. There wasn't like music going on and people dancing and I'm sitting there like an idiot playing Blue Moon. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, it was just sort of like a gathering and I was sitting there playing Blue Moon. Um, yeah, it's just, I don't know. It's again, very, uh, a game I'm very comfortable with a game. I'm very, uh, familiar with. I really enjoy it. I still think it's, it gets, a an unbelievably bad rap. I don't know why, but it's, it's a neat, engaging game. It's a great two player game that came along at a time for me when I was starting to realize Man, these collectible card games are complicated, and no one will play them with me. Right. Blue Moon and some other games that came out around that time still can give you that feeling. You can build your own deck. You can modify. You can make it your own. You can you can sort of, you know, these are my people. And yet it's playable. You can teach it. You can play it. You can enjoy it. You can do all those things. Um, so, yeah. You've distinctly yeah. forgotten about the lack of fun, though. I disagree. <laughs> I, I like it. I think it's very fun. See, you say you don't understand why it's not more popular. I have a lot of reasons. Go ahead. Tell me seven of them. <laughs> okay. The art, and I know that you like the art, but I thought the art was, it's that old CCG, let's you know, appeal to teenage hormonal guy type art. I dislike that. That one faction especially. That's, that's it. It's just one faction. That I faction's actually, in the game. I like that the art in the game, they gave each clan of people, each group, to a different artist, Ooh. which is something that now gets a lot of praise from other games. Like, oh, we got we got all these artists to each il illustrate one group of people or one faction or one planet. In this game, you have that. Each deck was by a specific artist. Beautiful artwork. Keep going. That was number one. What else you got? Number two. Oh, it's, I'm ready to shoot two, down everything. Six. It's boring. Um, and then number seven, I, I gave it another chance when Blue Moon Legends came out and did not like it then. So those are those Got are it. well thought through reasons. All right. My number two. <laughs> <laughs> I just found it to be very much. It just was too simple for me, I guess, is the is the real reason. All right. Have you played it, Paula? Blue I Moon? haven't played it. No. All right. No rush. Your, your game quality is quite high on your list. You don't want to drag it down. <laughs> I think All you right. and I might have similar tastes, so I think I, we need to play it, Paul. Z, I think I think that might be true. From from Are all of kidding? the she Dice Tower videos I have watched, 10. I think it might be true. Yeah, right. But she also put Targi on the list, and I don't I, know. I mean, we like the same gamer, kind of things. Yeah. There's a I yeah, have a yeah. wide variety of things I like to play. So. Well, speaking of Ani game Omni gamers or Ani gamers or Oni gamers, my number two is Oni Tom. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Omnitama. That was not, that was not a four segue at all. Um, <laughs> Jeez. Uh, since Onitama's come out, I've played it a ton. 
I mean, part of this is I went to that homeschool convention at one time and demoed Onitama about 50, 60 times with people. So maybe yeah, that's definitely inflated the numbers for sure. But Are I thought, you playing I as like, half of that equation? Yes, or? a lot of times I was playing, you know, and then it's kind of like, yes, there's a movie. Yes, that's how you win. Okay, let's reset. Now play your dad. Um, <laughs> and uh, I just... But outside of that, I played it all over the place. I played it with my wife. I played it with my kids. I played it at conventions. If you're like, oh, we got some time to blow. Oh, let's play Onitama. It works really well. This one's definitely on the list because of its length. But I played it quite a bit. And do you know that Sam once beat Jason at this? I feel I, like. Yeah, you have to say it for him. That was one of <laughs> those like stories he I, would never let go. <laughs> I feel like I got to say that at this point. If anybody anywhere was playing Onitama, he burst into the room just to mention that. <laughs> so Onitama, my number two. And finally, number one. Okay, number one, most played game. This is a game that is kind of new in my life in but I have, it. since it came in to my life i've played it over 50 times in the last month that is partly because it's short but uh twilight it's four. it's it is twilight imperium i played it 50 times it is a hundred hours no, that's more than a hundred hours a thousand hours it's the crew it is the crew it is the crew yeah the crew is now i mean I played it. I don't I played want to it for the brag, first time just... on the Dice Tower cruise, and was like, "This is great!" And played it a bunch because you're playing each of those scenarios until you beat them. And sometimes they take longer, and sometimes they're shorter. And there's already there's 50 in the game to begin with, and so you're playing. And then uh, when I recently was on a trip over to England, and I was there with uh, Nick and Mike Murphy and Matthew Jude, and we. Did almost nothing but play the crew. Um, <laughs> we played it so many times on this trip, and we are still now remotely through Skype playing it. Um, and it's, I mean, we're playing it so much, um, and it's now, it's uh, How are you playing a trick-taking game over Skype? I don't get it. Uh, well, we are on Skype, but we there's a version of it um, online that we found. You're just using like a random deck of cards, basically, like an Uno deck, and um, and going through the scenario and like playing it, it. Uh, okay. because we also own copies of it. Um, and so you can look at you can look in our book of like what is the scenario. Okay, now we'll use these virtual cards to play it. Um, okay, that makes sense. And it's my favorite. It's so fun. It's so fun. <laughs> This I've, one will be on my list the next time we do this. I are, I considered it actually for this list, but I haven't played it enough yet. Yeah. I just have been playing it almost nonstop for like a month. It's a lot of plays. This is your new favorite game, Tom, right? It's it's one of my new favorite games, yes. I really it's your enjoy number it. one. It's one of my favorite games I've played recently, yes. Number one game. <laughs> what a all time. <laughs> hedging. A lot of hedging going on here. There's a lot of this is not happening till um, January, dude. You got anything could happen. Anything could happen. It's you heard it here first, folks. <laughs> All right, my number one already got called out by Paula. You were right, Paula. Pandemic it's is my pandemic. number one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I did not combine yeah. them. Uh, this is just pandemic. Wow. So this is the funny thing is. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Oh, Tom. Why does Tom, why do you own all these masks? I know, because he's a total creeper. That's <laughs> why. <laughs> Tom, what are you doing, man? You I look was wearing like a, a mask to be a creeper, you dork. You look like, <laughs> the thing is, you, yeah, since the he chest does. part is showing, he looks like he's getting uh, his beard trimmed. You look like he got a little bib on. <sighs> anyway, pandemic. Good. Halloween's got to be really fun. At I know, Tom. right? He takes breaks just to change out the outfit. One day is not enough. <laughs> um, all right, pandemic. What was I talking about? Playing it a lot. Everyone knew this was going to be number one in your list. <laughs> they did? How? 
<laughs> hmm, I wonder how. We anyway, I played a lot. Before. I like it. Uh, it's good. Pandemic. Number one. <laughs> uh, my number one is No Thanks. Hmm. But because... no, I thought it had to be a game you play correctly. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you know this, Paul? What's played, about to happen? He played this for like years. <laughs> He played this for years and then found out he was playing wrong. Did you know that, Paula? No, I didn't know. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's okay. He was still playing it. Though, that's right. I guess you're right. If you're not playing by the right rules, are you playing the yeah, game? It's kind of like me saying, oh, I've been working out for many years. Oh, I wasn't working out correctly. I have to lift the weight. Oh, I was just standing <laughs> near it. I'd like to invite Paul to take Z's spot for the next top tens. Oh, Smith. Um, oh, how do I turn no. my feet off now? Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> if i could uh, turn your feet off i would have i would have been like Bleh. oh yeah no um <laughs> so uh this one's very, very short there's that sure and and the rule i was playing wrong was very minor anyway uh although yes there's like six rules but i still like it i've played it quite a bit since then too it's just again it's that game that i can teach anybody anywhere and i have um, for a while, I thought For Sale might be this game, and For Sale does go to six players, which gives it that advantage, because No Thanks is a max of five, mm -hmm. um, which is unfortunate, because you think they could have made a slightly bigger deck and it would work with six. But anyhow, I digress. Um, the I just, I like it. I like it. I play it a lot. So No Thanks, my number one. Nice. Okay. Are there any games that are people who are watching live thought we should have put on the list? Uh, and you're like, I thought for sure you would have put this list. Let us know, and we'll talk about it real quick. Um, uh, people have been asking about the masks. Actually, no one's been asking about them. But um, I asked. Are, this is from a, a trick. I put I put a link in the description, which I was worried that you guys would notice, but you didn't. It's Trick or Treat Studios. They're actually based from California, and these are the same company that makes the masks for. Um, the Universal Studios ho oh, Hollywood cool. Night. Yeah, they're really great masks. And so uh, they were board game fans and wanted to know if I could use these in my videos years ago. And I said, yes, I'll find a way. And you have. You found I it. <laughs> well, this is not the first time. When Holly was little, she used to wear them and dance in the background of board game breakfast videos. <laughs> she won't do that nowadays. She's got okay. self-respect now. <laughs> uh, let's see. So um, Rook... For me, someone said, no, I, my wife played Rook a ton, not me. What about Seven Wonders? This is for everyone. Played a decent amount. Seven Wonders is another one of those games that I feel like is easy to pull out. When you have a big group over and you're like, oh, let's just play something that's easy to pick up that we can play kind of quickly. I feel like that's another one that kind of falls into that category. I think Seven Wonders came out around the same time as Pandemic, if I'm not mistaken. I was playing Pandemic. So imagine Hearthstone. Because Hearthstone is only an app, I don't include it for these yeah. lists. Right. But it would be pretty high. I played like seven or eight games last night, and then another three this morning, I think. Wow. Um, well, I go through these ebbs and flows. With I'll play a whole bunch of it, and then I'll fade off. So okay. it just happened to. It, I'm I'm in that mode right now where I'm building decks and testing them out. Okay. Uh, pitch car. I played a lot, but I. It, I set it up at conventions and run it. Same with Wits and Wagers. And that's pretty much the only time I do it. Right. It mm. gets played enough. Uh, teach You is only for people. Never mind. Um, <laughs> Seventh Continent. <laughs> I've only played Seventh Continent like 10 times, maybe. Each time has been quite long. But it felt that, weird yeah. putting a game like that on the list. I'm not there either with that game. I haven't played nearly that much. Yeah. I'd be um, curious to know what people think is like a, a lot of plays for a game. You know, I think it, some of that depends on like the size of someone's collection. If you only have a few games, you're probably playing those games every time you're playing games. But if you have a larger collection, how often are you getting your games a specific game to the table and how many plays of it does, do you go, oh, I've actually played that a lot. You know, like I was saying, I think I played 
cast as a Mad King Ludwig like three or four times in the last month or two. And we're like, that feels like a lot of plays in a short amount of time. But I wonder how other people kind of feel about that. Yeah, I don't. Every once in a while, I'll meet people and they'll say something like, I've played. Uh, I think one guy here in the, in, the, in the chat said something like he had played a million hands of magic. And I was like, whoa, that's a lot. But I, I meet people who say they played games in the thousands of times. Unless you're logging it, though. Yeah. I found Jeff Jeff did a segment on this one time. People think they, they do stuff more than they do. Mm. You'll say, oh, I played this game hundreds of times. And you actually have it. Right. You know, you, you, you think you do. People are giving yeah. numbers here for Paula. Thank 50, you, everyone. 15, 20, 10. Well, there's no consensus. 20. Yeah. Um, until you run out of sheets in the book. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, like the rolling rights when you're, yeah. when they're gone. You're like, okay, we played it a lot. <laughs> We've think, used all the 20, provided sheets. 20 sounds like a good number. And again, it's going to be harder if it's like Twilight Imperium, right? You play that 20 mm. times. You have to vote a lot of hours into that. But I think. 20 is a game that has crossed now from a game I like playing to a game I've played a lot. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Yeah. Yeah, 20 sounds good. And this person says that they played DC Deck Builder 273 times. Wow. That's a not a short game, man. Oof. I'm about to get rid of that, actually. What? All righty. Well, we got to shut this that down here, folks. Comment. So a couple things. Uh, one, tonight... Dice Tower Chat live at 9 o'clock, so come back for that. Uh, next week, we're doing another top 10. It's going to be me, Z, and this time we'll be joined by Travis Oates, who is uh, doing Above Board, and we're going to be talking about top 10 most influential games of all time. Whoa. The crew will not be on the list, because um, it just came out. Um, other than that, please check out Paula's channel. It is really funny. Uh, I don't often laugh out loud at skits on the internet. I think a lot of skits are silly. Mine, mine, of course, include it, but Paula's stuff is really, truly good. I hope it's and also silly, but thank you. <laughs> well, so I know what you mean. Mine are stupid. <laughs> I don't know. When I'm shooting mine, usually at one point on set, I go, this is so stupid. <laughs> if you're not doing that, you're doing it wrong, Paula. You know that. Come on. At some point, you got to be like, like, this is so stupid. This is so dumb. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's good. That's a good indication. <laughs> Well, we appreciate it. And, of course, check out her podcasts. Uh, the the one podcast of, about monsters. What's it called again? The, the, it's, uh, Death by Monsters. It's all about monsters, mysteries, and the unknown. It is board game adjacent because my co-hosts are Matthew Jude and Nick Murphy, who also have been seen on uh, Dice Tower here on Board Game Breakfast. And they have their own channels. Uh, we don't talk about board games, but... There's that. And then uh, I am now a full cast member, like I said earlier, on This Game is Broken, which is a board game comedy panel show. I don't have the pitch for that one down yet because I'm still new to it. But if you like Doesn't funny matter, discussions folks. about you, board games. Yeah, 100%. If you, listen. if you like podcasts and you're watching this, you need to check out both of these. I really think so. Like if that crossover is there, you care for podcasts at all, and you're clearly here watching this, You've got to check out Death by Monsters. This game is broken. Those are two of the best podcasts out there. And either Z or myself has been a guest on this. This game is broken. One of us was asked. All right. So that is the. (laughs) I'm not responsible for that at all. I'm new. I'm new to it. (laughs) Just, just. Okay. So anyway, thank you, Paula. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you so much for having me. We'll see you guys next time. Until then, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. Thanks. I'm Paula Dimming. Well, okay.